Amity has introduced to us, the audience, as this cruel and callous bully character, but as the series progresses, we learn that there is a lot more to her than that. Beneath the veneer of perfection and elegance and just being above it all and not really having to bother with all the things that trouble us normal people, she is in reality very deeply insecure. She's anxious, and perhaps worst of all, she's lonely. The first few episodes of the show create the impression that her and Luce have absolutely nothing in common, but in reality, they're quite similar people. While Amity is initially quite condescending toward Luz, it is implied that she is very jealous of Luz. Luz is spontaneous. Luz follows her gut and her instincts, and once she has an impulse to do something, she just does it. And yeah, she's a little dorky and a little weird, and she doesn't always make the right decisions, but they're her decisions. They're not decisions that she made just because she's expected to make them. Amity is always controlled. Amity is always self-consciously, debilitatingly aware of how other people see her, and this terrifies her. She acts like she's superior to those around her, but in reality, she's dependent on them. Her sense of self-worth at the start of the series derives almost entirely from demonstrating to herself and those around her that she is superior to everyone else. She's at the top of the hierarchy, perhaps, but she's dependent on those directly below her. Without them, she doesn't really have any good sense of herself. Why does she act like this, one could ask? Well, there is perhaps not just one clearly definable reason for this, but the show implies that a lot of this ties back to her parents. In episode 115, Understanding Willow, we do, in fact, get to understanding Willow, but we also get to understanding Amity. We learn a lot about her. When they were young, Amity and Willow were close friends, but Amity eventually stopped being friends with Willow because her parents pressured her to do so. They pressured Amity to instead become friends with the other rich kids, even though she had no desire to become friends with them. So, what exactly is going on here? Is this a situation like we saw with Pacifica Northwest in Gravity Falls, in which her parents control her every move, or is it more complicated than that? We don't have all the answers quite yet. This episode is more about Willow, and by extension, the relationship between Willow and Amity, than it is about Amity's parents as people, and what they did to Amity. Emotionally. We'll learn much more about Amity's parents, and how they have manipulated her life as the series progresses, but that does not mean we do not have any information at this point. By closely looking at specific scenes in the Owl House, as well as comments made by Owl House showrunner Dana Terrace, we can critically discern the truth about Amity's parents. Looking at the scene in which Amity's parents declare that Amity can no longer be friends with Willow, I wonder if it is in fact really true that both Amity's parents are equally at fault. It might not be. Obviously, they're both not good people. They have no qualms about destroying the emotional and social life of their daughter just because she strays from the expectations they set for her. But her parents react differently. Amity's father seems to be more haughty and dismissive. For him, it's just common sense that his daughter should cut ties with Willow and become friends with the children of his closest business associates. There's no emotion here, it's just pure logic, at least his very cold and callous brand of logic. He doesn't see her as an actual, distinct human being. Instead, he just sees her as an extension of himself. I couldn't help but be reminded of the relationship between Lily and Lusamine, or Lusamine in Pokemon Sun and Moon. After 
years and years of being abused and manipulated, Lily finally stands up to her mother and asserts that children are not just things that belong to their parents. This is quite similar to how Amity's father sees her just as a thing that belongs to him. He values nothing more than he values strength, and because Amity is an extension of him, she, he wants her to value that strength too. It's not something we can sympathize with, obviously, but it is something we can understand and think about intellectually. It makes a certain, if perverted, sort of sense. Amity's mother is a different matter entirely, I think. I don't want to say that she is necessarily worse than Amity's father, because there is no truth of that here. But in the scene in which Amity's parents stop Amity from being friends with Willow, I was much more disconcerted by the behavior of Amity's mother. Amity's father reminds me of every snobby, elitist businessman who's powered by nothing but his own selfish, myopic desires, but Amity's mother is more eerie and disquieting than that. Good children don't squabble, dear, she says, reminding me of every terrible stepmother in a fairy tale. They even give her a distinctive haughty British accent for extra coldness. She is as much of a cutthroat business person as her husband. Even the word she uses in her command to her daughter, sever, is a cold business word. It does not belong in the sphere of personal relationships. You sever your ties with a business or organization. You do not sever your ties with another human being unless your heart is made of ice. If someone came up to me and said that they'd severed their relationship with their girlfriend instead of saying, oh, we just broke up, I would not trust that person. I would not rely on them. But Amity's mother has something else going on, something significantly more sinister. She's not just a cold-hearted, cutthroat businesswoman. If all I had was this impression, I would have just said, okay, we'll see where it goes, and I wouldn't have bothered making a video about it. But there is more. Consider a remark Dana Terrace made during an AMA about the Owl House. As we know, Amity's hair is not naturally green, like that of her siblings. Rather, it's been dyed green. It is naturally brownish. And you can see a little part of that appearing. Now, if you want to be generous, you could just say, oh, maybe she dyes it because she wants to look more like her siblings or like her mom. But that's not the case. The truth is more disconcerting, as Ms. Terrace revealed. Mrs. Blight, and I am directly quoting Terrace here, likes her children to be color-coordinated. A few points here. Number one, that's extremely creepy and uh, abusive. Number two, it perhaps suggests that Amity's mother is doing more to control Amity's life than is Amity's father. This does not make her father a good person, necessarily. But the fact that Amity's mother wants her daughter's hair color to match her own, that she's going that far in ensuring conformity in the family, implies that she is the one kind of bending her daughter's will to her own. This is certainly very disconcerting. I would like to end on one last comment that Dana Terrace made in the AMA. I brought up Pacifica Northwest before because that's the obvious comparison, especially since Dana Terrace once worked on Gravity Falls. And during the AMA, another fan asked about this comparison, and this was Dana Terrace's response. 
Amity's parents appear one way, but there's a little more to them than you guys think, and that could be either good or bad for our protagonists. I especially have fun writing Mr. Blight. He's interesting. This implies that Amity's parents are not complete and total monsters. Especially her father. Though Mr. Blight appeared as cruel and callous toward Amity as Amity's mother, this quote from Terrace implies that there's a lot more going on than that. There are more layers to him than we have hitherto seen. It is true that, aside from the admittedly very disturbing incident in which he helps his wife sever Amity's friendship with Willow, he has not displayed any other signs of controlling behavior so far as we know. He is not the one who made Amity dye her hair. Even if both her parents are evil to some degree, her father seems to be a somewhat lesser degree of evil than her mother. But what do y'all think? Do you think there is a difference like this between Amity's parents? Do y'all want to see more of Amity's parents as the show progresses? Is there more to them than meets the eye? So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching The Owl House. It is a lovely little show. It's very creative and very thoughtful and very warm-hearted. And I'm especially loving a lot of these relationships that it's slowly unveiling. I want to know more about the bond between Amity and her parents, and I'm really invested in the growing uh, romance between Amity and Luce. The show is getting better with time, so I can't wait to see where it goes from here. It's really exciting. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.